writing all speedrun scripts in Kev the Kangaroo Runs to any percent digital version. Okay, so we begin with cage jump in the hub world. It is the very. F but wait, who are you? Hey, I'm trying to a washed up Kev the Kangaroo series runner who occasionally derasts KO for marathons. A moderator and I was once second place on KO2 leaderboards, I guess. Anyway! Okay, so we begin with Cage Jump in the Hub World. It is the very first possible skip in the game, it's cycle dependent, medium difficulty, bonus points for being one of the five biggest reset points in the whole run. I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10 because it looks very cool and if you mess it up you can just reset 5 seconds into the run. Next one is Beaver Dialogue Skip in Beaver's Forest, the first level in game. There are two ways of skipping it. First one is jumping from here to avoid the trigger that starts a cutscene. Nothing fancy. 5 out of 10. The other one is slightly faster, harder and cooler. You just jump from the well. It also helps runners in the setup for our next skip. 6.5 out of 10. Not tutorial skip 1. Cycle dependent, medium difficulty, 6.5 out of 10. Not tutorial skip 2. Not much to say about this one, easy difficulty unless you're playing with a steering wheel. Five out of ten. River jump. Hard. It's also cycle dependent and doesn't save that much time. Two and a half out of ten because the reward is too little compared to the difficulty. Fish skip. Not a real skip, but thanks to it you don't have to wait for the first fish to attack first so we can go. I don't know, 4 out of 10? Mill jump, a pretty big reset point for new runners. 7 out of 10 mainly because it saves quite a lot of time and it's not that hard once you learn how to do it. It can soft lock you though. Pudger Rodeo skip. The search for this holy grail continues because this setup is unbelievably hard to do and it softlocks the player most of the time. Most likely the hardest skip in the game that I think only has been done twice ever? 1 out of 10? <laughs> and with all that we are done with the first level. Oh boy it's going to be a long video isn't it? Moving on! The Great Escape begins with a chase section where runners can run past or jump over various objects to save time. I've decided to score all of them 4.5 out of 10 because they don't save that much time and my brain is too small to remember all of those spots when I do a run. Tentacle Skip. It's like a built-in skip from the developers. You jump onto this ledge and then drop down skipping tentacles. 4 out of 10. The variable that skips picking up the checkpoint and using boomerangs gets 5 out of 10 because it's much swagger. The great escape out of bounds. It's IL only because you lose too many coins if you do it in an any percent run. Pretty hard. Let's say we're going to give it um, two and a half out of ten. This part skip gets six out of ten because it's free. Nut skip. There are 4 nuts that a player can knock down, we only need 2 of them. 6 out of 10. Single nut is done by so called boomerang tech. 
which lets you jump from further part of the ledge. I don't know, XD7. This platform skip. 4 and half out of 10. Next level. Great tree start with bridge skip where you jump on a fence to cages and then onto the bridge. Skips freeing beavers from cages and fighting the gnome. Very swaggy looking. 8 out of 10. Gnome chair skip. It's 9 out of 10. Not hard, it looks cool. Saves quite a bit of time. I like it very much. By preserving momentum you can do this crazy sick and twisted skipper. It's not faster, so it's A2. If you feel like it, you can try this funny jump. 3 out of 10. If you don't do gnome chair skip, you can do this job to save some time. 4 and half out of 10. Next one is this. The digital version of this skip from retail. You got to hug the tree to load upcoming part of the level. 6.5 out of 10. Or you just go for a spider skip. Uh, 5 out of 10. Balloon skip. No need for shooting other two. 6.5 out of 10. At the end of the level we've got a slide from which we can jump down early saving time. 6 out of 10, spooky looking. Half a minute into river raid level we can skip this part of the level that I'm going to call B-skip. It may also deload a few coronaviruses in water. 7 out of 10. Or you do the river right out of bound, which is now officially second newest skip in this video, because with current pace of people finding new stuff, I'll never finish this video, because I need to constantly update the project. Seriously, the deadline is February 6th. There, I said it. Chaos speedrunners try not to find new skips for 24 hours challenge, 2023, impossible. Skip? Ah, uh, 5 out of 10. Fortress skip sounds cool, but isn't really. Runners just grab this ledge instead of going in the middle of this section. 5 out of 10. Raft jump. After activating this button you must quickly come back to the raft and do a tail swing above it to be able to jump out and skip a big part of the level. Can be a bit problematic for new runners and can soft lock. 9 out of 10. Yo, remember him? We're skipping the third mushroom here, literally free. 6 out of 10. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is early raft. It can be used multiple times throughout this level. It pretty much cancels docking animation and lets KO jump out of it early. 7 out of 10. Shaman's Cave got no skips because it is a boss fight level. Igloo Village begins with a roll cancel jump that looks innocent but saves a lot of time because you don't have to go around this place. 8.5 out of 10 in my opinion. Igloo Village out of bound 2. Why 2? Because we already had one out of bound before discovery of this. Thanks quad jump. How about 5.5 out of 10? Following two skips got no names and they do the same thing pretty much. They save time, can you believe it? 
5 and a half out of 10. On other one, players jump onto this ice block instead and you know the rest. 6 and a half, maybe 7 out of 10. Okay, uh, this uh, gets 6 out of 10. Okay, okay. Flying hard skip. We skip fighting this dude and picking up content from the chest by simply jumping towards that direction. 5.5 out of 10. Igloo village out of bounds. 10 out of 10. Very epic. Replaces boring and annoying casual route with something wow. Bouncer jump. I think it even loses time, lol. XD. Ice cave jump. Doing a roll cancel makes my PP do the big PP, that's why it gets a... Uh, 8 out of 10? Epic. If you do it with the flying hat, it's a... 3 out of 10? Not epic. Here we can start with swag ice. Not very hard to do the first jump. High skill singing, very pog. 9 out of 10. This footage is not sped up by the way. Down the mountain. No reach skips. You can save time by avoiding ducats, but you need them. It's not worth it. 2 out of 10. Crystal Mines. My favorite level in the whole game. We start with Raylock. Pretty hard, not many people attempted. Hella swaggy. Doesn't save that much time. 6 out of 10. Elevator skip in Crystal Mines uses a quadruple jump mechanic, which I forgot to mention in River Raid Out of Bounds. Cool! 6.5 out of 10 because it's a bit hard. Elevator skip? Another one! You don't have to fight the Gnotic Noblin, Gnotic Nelf. 4 out of 10 because sometimes I brain milkshake and lose a minute here. A secret mushroom is hidden behind this wall that lets us skip the part on the right. 5 out of 10, nice. This cool looking jump uh, is saves time, looks cool. What else could you ask for? Six and a half out of ten. Boss fight on the station has no skips. The race, despite being well a racing level, has a skip. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Next. Actually, wait. I lied. I'm so sorry. It's the second freshest skip in the run. At first it looks stupid and confusing, but after a while it's only stupid. Let's give it a 7 out of 10. Hostile Reef has a skip. The Hostile Reef out of bounds skips the whole level and is very easy. Feel free to go for it on your very first run. 8 out of 10. Air noise! <laughs> There's a direct route variant that's harder and faster but only gets 7 out of 10. A semi-direct variant is an 8.5 out of 10. Whole deep ocean, same as the other water level, is skipped by an out of bounds. It separates boys from men and is a major reset point for new runners that very often they want to continue running the game after failing the skip multiple times. To be fair, understandable. The thing with it is that once you figure out how to do it, you get it every time. Because of difficulty of this skip, I'm rating it only 7.5 out of 10.
Rock jump! Direct route, deep ocean out of bounds is just a no. No time for setup, hard, would not try again. 3 out of 10. Lair of Poison unfortunately doesn't have any skips just like other boss levels. Sad. Before we get to the next level we can do Pelican Dialogue Skip. We enter the level by talking with the Pelican but instead we can just hit a certain trigger by doing some parkour. A cool unexpected side effect is that after finishing the volcano level we will spawn in a way better place than we would normally. It saves time twice, wow, 7 out of 10. I'm pretty bad at this so I just could not give it a higher score. Trip to Island is kind of a special level, it's got two hard skips and I simply love them, but before I score them we must talk about other skips. First one is platform drop that looks easy, is easy and saves quite a lot of time. I must give it a high rating of 7 out of 10. Flying hat skip, it's weird, KO sometimes won't grab the ledge, 6 out of 10. These two jumps get 4.5 out of 10. Once again a singular balloon will be enough for us. 5 out of 10. And now the stars of our show. First is barrel skip. Runners gotta go out of bounds and walk on an invisible bridge, do a jump, after a while another one and glide down to hit a mushroom. 8 and a half out of 10. Right after it we've got the pelican up warp that starts with a palm tree jump. Not forgetting to spawn the pelican, getting off it in the correct spot, remembering the time you jumped out, jumping over one important trigger, doing the palm tree again, spawning second pelican and getting on it after correct amount of time, or this will happen. It's beautiful. 9 out of 10. Treasure Island Time. Starts with a pretty cool and free jump. Hot jump saves 15 seconds and I got no idea why some people struggle with it. 9 out of 10. New hottest thing, a triple slash quadruple jump allows runners to do this. It's pretty hard so I'm giving it a 3. Here you can skip the inner part of the tunnel thing in multiple ways. They get a 6.5 out of 10. Got to be careful of the shooting guy though. Fish skip? Yeah, uh, 4 out of 10? Boulder skip! Yeah, good skip, what can I say? Easy difficulty, skips a boring section, just nice and easy. 7.5, maybe, just maybe 8 out of 10. Skip 51 is pretty much a treasure island out of bounds. Looks cool, so I like it, hence 6 9 out of 10. <laughs> nice. Kinda looks like that one part of KO Free Speedrun. Also shoutouts to Pobma for consistency with naming skips. Right after boulder skip we've got the pillar jump. Easy and actually saves a lot of time and some annoying platforming while fighting spiders. 
a strong 7. Here we can jump off early, 4 out of 10. This jump is a bit risky because of crabs and gunner. 4 and half out of 10. The volcano. This skip is pretty fresh on the digital version of the game. It's the volcano out of bounds from Retail KO2. First jumps are pretty hard, but the rest is out easier even though you can't see anything really. Very nice skip that saves a lot of time, but because of its difficulty I cannot give it more than 6 out of 10. It's definitely a strat for advanced players. Laser skip? You can jump over them here. 7 out of 10? Pretty good! Pot jump. Okay, I'm very biased about this skip. I know it's way too hard to try it 45 minutes into the run. Too inconsistent and simply not worth because if you do it, you miss like 15 ducats that you need. But there's just something about it that I just adore. I'm giving it a 2 out of 10 because it's overall not a good skip and also because these are my odds of getting it on practice. After the crane game you can exit out during the fadeout. 7 out of 10. But we don't do it. In order to skip the whole next level we, after picking up the 20th chest from the lava, exit immediately to main menu, load back in and go back to port to bribe the bossman that guards access to last few levels. This is a huge skip, that's why it gets 10 out of 10. It has no skips besides the one that skips this level completely. Moving on, we've got Abandoned Town. Abandoned Town out of bounds, foreshadowing a real one. Skips quite a bit of the level. It's awesome, so 8 out of 10. Man, I need to learn it. Jumping to the higher level early in the warehouse gets 6.5 out of 10. Both variants. This strafe jump gets a 6. Nothing special. Before we get to a more flashy skip, we can do this instead. Not sure how to name it, so I'll call it Skip43, because that's how Pubmas' video with the skip is called. It's pretty cool. I'm a fan, that's why I'm giving it a 7. Now's the time for Abandoned Town out of bounds that is not really an out of bounds but looks like it. In an Excel spreadsheet with all KO2 skips, it's named AT Sequence Break with the question mark because it skips activating a button connected to a lift. But Joto, it's not even close to out of bounds! I know, I know. I just thought I'd score this and next strat as one because they go in pair and I don't see why you would do one without the other. Anyway, after doing that sequence break you do this invisible part because you've skipped a trigger. It can be a little tricky because sometimes you can fall in water and lose a lot of precious time. I'm giving this whole skip 8 out of 10. Jumpless chase? Is it a skip? Well, you skip jumping on this part where an unloaded pirate ship is shooting cannonballs at you. Swaggy. 4 out of 10? Pier jump. No need to go around to the invisible ship. 5 out of 10? Can be spooky sometimes. Oh! Hunter's Galleon. Stair skip? I don't know, it probably is slower, but I still do it. 3 out of 10. Spikes room jump. There are two. One goes like this.
And the other one is much cooler looking. After doing those jumps you must go down to do button skip. 5 out of 10. The less risky way is like this. It's pretty fresh too. 6 and half out of 10. Stair skip. Hey yo, the first one was so good they made stair skip too, no way. 5 out of 10 because it's sometimes hard to land on the button. Parrot skip. Instead of freeing our friend, we jump on this window frame and onto its cage, going straight to the end of the level. A very good skip, but because of nerves, a lot of runs died here since it's the last skip in game. 9 out of 10, sorry parrot. With a quadruple jump, you may skip going up to do parrot skip. Is it ever hard? 2. Final duel, the last boss level. Unfortunately it only has a little strat in the first phase of the fight that I can't call a skip. And with all that I've scored every any percent digital version skip in Kyo the Kangaroo Run 2. If it was a tier list it would look like this, I guess. I'm sorry for not giving credit to absolute gamers that found these skips. It's kinda hard to tell who found what, especially the old skips that have been here since forever. I'm also no longer on Chaos Speedrunner's Discord server, so that makes it a bit harder to keep myself updated on new findings. I don't 100% believe in the ko 2 skips Excel spreadsheet, since the person responsible for it has not updated it in a long time and also because of how many times this person was wrong about usefulness of few skips. It's kind of impressive actually. Yeah, we don't get along. Time for shoutouts to all amazing people that helped me with this video in one way or another. Thank you Kangura Kaupe for fact checking the script for me and sending me new findings. Big shoutouts to Nyoru also known as Grofessor on YouTube for helping me out with video editing tips. Same goes to Graket who always told me how to do a certain thing in Sony Vegas whenever I asked. Thanks Jesus for finding stuff for me on Chaos Peter and his Discord server. Thank you Pobma, Sigotu, Meaningless and Volido for allowing me to use your clips in the video. Oh, and Zoe, and Zoe! I totally did not almost forget I got a clip from you, haha. <laughs> in the video description you'll find links to all of their speedrun.com profiles or Twitch channels, also an invite link to Chaos Speedrunners Discord, as well as a link to my Twitch where I stream regularly. I mainly do speedrunning and automotive content, so if you're into that, feel free to join me there. If you've watched this whole video, then seriously, thank you a lot. I appreciate you spending time on something that I've created. This is my first real YouTube video pretty much and I just want to test myself how much and how well video editing I've learned so far. I hope you enjoyed. Until the next one, take care. Why are you still here? What am I doing here? Uh...